Hi guys, it's Dan from DansBestTech.com. Razer has finally done it. They have a gaming ultrabook with a full GTX graphics card inside. How well does it game? Click up here to go straight to those results. For everyone else, let's start with the history of the Razer Blade Stealth. In 2016, Razer released the Blade Stealth for $1,000. The laptop was super light and portable, but it included a flimsy integrated GPU, the Intel HD Graphics 520, and only 8GB of RAM. Razer, a company dedicated to PC gaming, expected users to purchase and plug in an external graphics card like the Razer Core to get the performance of a gaming laptop. Fast forward to December of 2018, and Razer improved the GPU to the MX150, improved the cooling to accommodate it, but increased the price tag significantly to $1,600. This MX150 revision was good and could play games at medium settings, but the performance still wasn't as good as something powered by a full GTX series GPU. Finally, today I just received the new and approved Razer Blade Stealth with a GTX 1650 inside. Is it worth $1,800? To me, yes. It is the smallest and lightest laptop that can do some serious gaming, photo editing, and video editing on. On the other hand, it's a little more expensive compared to some slightly larger and heavier options. Stay tuned for more on this. As an average Joe who doesn't like to break the bank, I typically review the cheapest base model. Razer is selling the new Blade Stealth with the Intel Iris Plus graphics for $1,500, but I had to upgrade to the GTX 1650 variant. In this laptop, you get the 10th generation Ice Lake Intel Core i7-1065G7, 16GB of dual channel soldered on RAM, and the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 with 4GB of GDDR5 VRAM. You get a 13.3 inch matte full HD screen at 1920 by 1080 resolution. You can pay $200 more to get the 4K touchscreen version, but I don't recommend it. I'll explain later. Both displays are surrounded by super thin 5mm side bezels. The SSD is locked at 512 gigabytes in size, which can be configured to a higher storage capacity at Razer. Regarding the form, this year's Razer Blade Stealth has the same length and width as last year's Stealth, but it's just slightly thicker and heavier. Its dimensions are 8 by 12 by 0 0.6 inches, and it weighs only 3.26 pounds. It's only half a millimeter thicker and 0 0.22 pounds heavier than last year's model. This is due to an additional heat pipe to mitigate extra heat from the much more powerful GTX 1650. Due to this laptop packing so much more power and such a thin and light chassis, I can see this being the go-to laptop for students or professionals who want something super small for mobility but also need the much more graphical power for games, photo or video editing, or even CAD work. Even the black anodized aluminum seems quality, until it gets covered in grease from your fingers. I personally left mine on. The hinge on the laptop feels very durable too. If you do get a touchscreen variant, the amount of screen wobble would be minimal. The flexing at the keyboard is very low as well. I have to press my finger very hard to get any kind of bending. The logo is subtle and doesn't light up, which I like because it feels more premium and is classier for the office and school. Although slim and light, the Razer Blade Stealth does not sacrifice on ports. The 2019 model includes the same ports as the 2018 Razer Blade Stealth. On the left side, the Razer Blade Stealth includes a headphone jack, a USB 3.1 Type-A, and a USB-C Thunderbolt 3 port with the higher four lanes of PCIe configuration, which can be used to charge the laptop or plug it into an external GPU like the Razer Core. On the right side, you get a second USB 3.1 Type-A and another USB-C Thunderbolt 3 port. I love the Thunderbolt 3 ports, but I wish there was an SD card slot. There is also no HDMI port like on the 2016 Blade Stealth. Regarding upgradability, you can upgrade the SSD on your own by simply removing the back cover. I've heard people installing the 2TB Samsung 970 EVO SSD. There's a link down in the description below. This upgradability is pretty nice considering most Ultrabooks these days have everything soldered onto the motherboard. I'm looking at you, Apple. Regarding the sound, I'm happy to say that the speakers are upward firing and sound very nice. There are four speakers instead of two. Everything is loud, clear, and crisp. It's very high quality sounding. It's only slightly worse than the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro speakers. For even better sound, use the headphone jack with some external speakers. Now let's talk about the display. The full HD version included in the base model is just fine. It gets really bright, 
and upgrading to the 4K touchscreen will not improve the picture quality on a 13-inch screen unless you hold the screen an inch away from your face. And the GTX 1650 can't drive 4K resolutions during gaming with high settings anyways. So yeah, save your money and stick with a full HD display unless you really need touch. I personally don't find touchscreens on laptops very ergonomic though. At the top exists a 720p webcam and an IR sensor which can be used for Windows Hello to sign into the laptop as well. Similar to the keys on the Alienware M15, these keys get a 9 out of 10 for me. They are better than the latest generation of MacBook keyboards, which I would rate a 6 out of 10, but they're still not perfect. These keys only provide 0.8 millimeters of travel, and as I've said in all my laptop reviews, I prefer a keyboard key with at least 1.4 millimeters of travel, like on my MacBook Air 2015. Putting the keyboard to the test using the 10 fast fingers typing test proved that I could type 70 words per minute just like I did on the Alienware M15, still slightly less than the 75 words per minute on my MacBook Air. Additionally, there is a slight increase in the amount of force required for each key press, so hand fatigue is slightly larger for me. The multicolored RGB backlighting is nice too. All keys have the same color though. They did that to improve battery life. One thing I'm not a fan of is the arrow keys separating the shift key and the question mark key. It'll take a while for me to relearn how to type questions. The Windows Precision Glass trackpad is bigger than the original Stealth trackpad, but the same size as the 2018 variant. I think this trackpad is one of the better trackpads I've used on a Windows laptop or Chromebook. It's slightly worse than Apple's trackpads, but I'll take this any day over any non-precision trackpad. It passes the finger roll test, but there are a few hiccups. Only the most subtle rolls don't register on the trackpad. Additionally, the trackpad feels very tight and premium. Nothing feels loose like on the Alienware M15 I reviewed a few months ago. So now we have to talk about the performance of the processor and graphics card. Over the past three years, Razer has finally done it. The Blade Stealth has gone from a laptop with almost zero gaming performance to the best performing laptop weighing less than 3.5 pounds. You'll just have to pay a premium for it. The 2019 Razer Blade Stealth is running the 10th generation Ice Lake Intel Core i7 1065G7 CPU along with the GTX 1650 GPU. When comparing the 2019 Razer Blade Stealth to its predecessors, the CPU Geekbench scores are almost twice as good, the OpenCL and 3D Mark Firestrike scores are almost 10 times as good, and therefore the gaming performance is almost 10 times as good as well. Way to go Razer! With maxed out settings, GTA 5 benchmarks with an average of 55 frames per second. Doom got around 70 frames per second, Witcher 3 averaged around 30 frames per second, but there was some serious stutter, and Tomb Raider benchmarks at 67 frames per second. Turning Tomb Raider settings to the bare minimum at 720p shows 240 FPS. As a result, although the Razer Blade Stealth with the GTX 1650 isn't as strong as some gaming laptops, any game can still be played at max settings and scaling back the settings will obviously improve the FPS and fix stutter. So I know what you're thinking. With all this power crammed into such a thin and light laptop, does the Razer Blade Stealth with the GTX 1650 thermal throttle? Actually no. Running Unigen Heaven for 30 minutes with the settings at Ultra, the internal temperature never climbed above 70 degrees C. The case temperature never climbed above 50 degrees C, and the graphics stayed at 2100 MHz, and the memory stayed at 3500 MHz. You'd think this laptop would run very hot, but since Razer added an additional fan last year and added an additional heat pipe this year, I would say there isn't any problem. The laptop stays pretty cool when doing everyday tasks, like taking notes or browsing the internet. Just make sure the laptop is set to power saver mode. The fans do kick in when gaming, but they aren't loud or annoying in my opinion. They're just fans, not jet engines. And as I said, the keyboard and bottom cover heat up to 50 degrees C. It gets warm, some would say hot even, but it won't burn you. Therefore, I can game with this laptop resting on my lap just fine. Regarding the battery, you'd think that because this is a gaming laptop, then the battery life would suffer, but I can tell you Razer paid a lot of attention to detail to maximize it. Razer used a low wattage screen, low wattage RAM, a 10 nanometer CPU that sips power, and a single light source for the keyboard to save on battery. As a result, the 53.1 watt hour battery causes the full HD blade stealth to last 8 to 9 hours during normal usage. This is typical for an Ultrabook, but amazing for a gaming laptop. Of course, due to the better GPU, the 100 watt power brick is twice the size as last year's, but I'm not complaining. 
So before I was showing you how Razer has perfected the Razer Blade stealth over time, I've been taking the approach that you're like me, you hate laptops that weigh more than 3.5 pounds, you want something super light to carry around with you at school or at work, but if you're willing to carry something just a little bit heavier, but you want the power of the GTX 1650, then there are some significantly cheaper options. A few examples are the Dell XPS 15, the Dell G5 5590, and the Acer Nitro 5. See links in the description below. But it's up to you. Let me know in the comments. Will you spend Razer's premium to get the absolute smallest and lightest Ultrabook rocking the GTX 1650? Additionally, I'm not an Apple fanboy. But I do currently have a lot of Apple devices. Is the Razer Blade stealth enough to convince Apple users to make the jump? Again, let me know what you think down in the comments. To me, it's very tempting. The GPU performance is significantly greater than any of Apple's affordable options. The size and weight are superb. The keyboard and typing experience is better. It has more of a variety of ports like USB 3.1. The only thing that's worse is the trackpad. Plus, there are many games not available or optimized for Mac OS, so I guess it's pretty obvious. If you want a game, go with the Razer Blade Stealth or one of the heavier options. If you need Final Cut Pro, stick with the MacBook. To conclude, should you buy the Razer Blade Stealth with the GTX 1650? If you want the best performing gaming laptop in a small and light case, one that comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, one that comes with 512 gigabytes of storage, one that has upgradable storage, one that has slim bezels around the screen, one that comes with Thunderbolt 3 as well as USB 3.1, one that sounds great, one that has at least four times the graphical performance over other Ultrabooks, one that can play just about any game at max settings, one that gets around eight to nine hours of battery life, and one that doesn't thermal throttle, then the Razer Blade Stealth with the GTX 1650 is for you. Just remember, it's pretty expensive at $1,800 compared to some of its heavier competitors, its keyboard has shallow keys, and its trackpad is subpar compared to Apple trackpads. So what do you think? Would you buy this $1,800 laptop? Click like if you liked this video, please subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to see more, and check out DanceBestTech.com for a full written review.